Hey there, I'm going to show you how the Williams percent R and the stochastic oscillator are the same indicator. Somebody mentioned to me the other day that, well, they look very similar. I was like, well, it's because they use the exact same information. Now the formulas are a little bit different. They're different in such a way that five plus three equals eight, and three plus five equals eight. They're going to give you the exact same thing in the end. So in order to prove that the Williams percent R and the stochastic oscillator are the same, I'm going to modify both of them so that I can get one to look like the other. Now this stochastic oscillator is a modified, more advanced version of the Williams percent R. They both start with the exact same information. The Williams percent R does not go anywhere with it, but the stochastic oscillator has the ability to smooth out this information and add a moving average to it. So what we're looking at with the stochastic is the Williams percent R with two different moving averages. And I'm going to build that for you using the Williams percent R. But in order to prove that they're the same thing, first, I'm going to modify the stochastic oscillator to show you that they're exactly the same thing. So I'm going to double click on the stochastic and on the stochastic, we've got the settings of 14, five and five. The Williams percent R is 14. So with the stochastic oscillator, we've got a slowing of five and we've got a signal line of five. So I'm going to change this slowing to one. So there is no slowing. It's going to be exactly the raw data. And from here with the colors, I'm going to change the signal line to no color. That way it's going to disappear. And when I hit okay, you're going to see that they are identical. They are giving you the exact same information. So I'm going to revert this stochastic oscillator oscillator back to its original form. So I'm going to throw on that moving average uh, with the parameters. I'm going to slow that five. So now we've got that basic stochastic oscillator. I'm going to add moving averages to the Williams percent R to give you the stochastic oscillator. Now, a lot of people don't know how to do this in MetaTrader 4. So I'm excited to be able to show you how to do this. So the first thing I want to do is add a moving average to this oscillator. The stochastic has a slowing period of five, and that essentially means it's it's a five period simple moving average that is added to the Williams percent R. We'll go to the navigator window, we'll go to indicators, and I'm going to be looking for a moving average. And from that, I'm going to drag it onto the Williams percent R. Now it's a five simple period moving average, and I'm going to apply it to the first indicators data. And I'll hit OK. So now I've got a simple period moving average applied to the Williams percent R. I'm going to do this one more time, and I'm going to take that moving average, do the exact same thing, drop it into that Williams percent R, and now it is still five. It is still simple. I'm going to choose previous indicators data. So it's going to add this moving average to the moving average that we've already added, not to the actual Williams percent R. And I will click previous. Now I'm going to change the color of this one to red. I'm going to make it thin so that it emulates the stochastic oscillator. I'll hit OK. And now we've got a moving average added to a moving average. So in order to see this, what I'm going to do now is take that Williams percent R and I'm going to change the color of it to white, just so that it blends in with the background. And I'll hit okay. And now what we've got is a stochastic looking Williams percent R. It is a moving average of the Williams percent R and there's a moving average added to that. And you can see that these are identical indicators. The Williams percent R is the same as the stochastic oscillator. Now, back in the day, the Williams percent R, I don't know how much it is today, but the Williams percent R or the Williams percent range is known as the upside down indicator. Because when we're looking at the uh, levels here, the Williams percent R starts at zero at the top and goes to minus 100 at the bottom. And the stochastic oscillator starts at zero at the bottom and goes to plus 100 at the top. The stochastic oscillator is about 20 years older than the Williams percent R, just in case you're wondering. So the stochastic did come first, but the stochastic is a much more versatile version of the Williams percent R. You can make the stochastic look like the Williams percent R simply by taking that slowing and moving it to one. And from there, you get the actual raw data that is used to give you that smoother stochastic oscillator. So a question that I get is how do I know this? So I've been looking at indicators for the last 20 years. I've been trying to find you know, as close to the holy grail as possible. And if you are interested in what I've come up with, I have a trading system called Ultra Blue Forex, and it is really as close to the holy grail as I think I can get. Now, there's a ton of indicators out there and you don't need to use every indicator. I checked out almost every indicator that I possibly could. And a lot of them, there's just not anything that we can use. There are some staple indicators. There's a couple of moving averages, 
images. I do like the RSI. There are some indicators that are very functional, very good that I have applied to my Ultra Blue system. To keep things really simple, there's only two, three, or four different indicators. There's really nothing complicated about it. I've done away with the stuff we don't need. I've done away with the stuff that doesn't work. And if you are interested in looking at a trading system that works really well, keeps things really simple, come visit me at ultrablueforex.com. The link is in the description below. There I have the resources and I will show you how to become a very successful trader. I hope this video was informative and at the very least, it showed you how to add moving averages to an established indicator.